radiation interception, radiation use efficiency, and crop productivity. In this lecture, which corresponds to chapter 13 of the book by Villalobos and Ferreres, we will see how crop yields can be related to radiation use efficiency and radiation interception by the crops. Let us remember first some ideas related to the photosynthesis of plants. Leaf level photosynthesis is a complex process composed of different processes. First, we have the fusion of CO2 from the atmospheres to the chloroplast following the concentration gradient. Therefore, we can write that the rate of net photosynthesis, Pn, is proportional to the difference in concentration of CO2 between the atmosphere and the substomatal cavities, the inside of the leaf. The proportionality constant is the stomatal conductance for CO2, expressed in units of mole per square meter per second. And this uh, equation tells us that the, open, the more open the stomata are, the more photosynthesis we can have. And the greater the gradient in concentration between the atmosphere and the leaves, the more photosynthesis we can have. But photosynthesis also has another process, which is the absorption of light by the photosynthetic pigments and the photolysis of water. Radiation is absorbed mainly by the chlorophylls, which are in the chloroplasts. Then, due to the photolysis of water, <coughs> oxygen is released and at the same time energy compounds ATP and ADPH are generated. This will be later used for CO2 reduction. This process does not depend on temperature or concentration of the CO2. The third process related or included in the photosynthesis process is the reduction of CO2 using the compounds generated in the photolysis of water. We require between 8 and 12 light quanta for each molecule of CO2 reduced. This reduction can occur in the dark and is very sensitive to temperature. It is regulated by photosynthetic enzymes. Therefore, including the three processes, the diffusion of CO2, the absorption of light and photolysis of water, and the reduction of CO2, the photosynthesis at the leaf level will depend on the concentration of CO2, on irradiance, and on temperature. Overall, the efficiency of photosynthesis is rather small. The ratio of stored energy to incoming energy is equivalent to 2 to 3% of incoming solar radiation with a theoretical maximum around 6%. If we express efficiency in proportion to net radiation, we have values between 6 and 7.5% with a theoretical maximum around 15. This will occur under conditions of diffuse light and very high photosynthesis like in greenhouses. We have also to remember that there are three types of photosynthesis mechanisms. C3, the C3 mechanism is that of most agricultural species and the natural flora. The C4 is typical of subtropical to tropical regions and in agricultural species it is observed in maize, sorghum, millet, sugarcane and some tropical grasses. The CAM, the crassulacin acid metabolism, is rarer and less important in crops. We can say for instance the agave or pineapple. 
In this case, the CO2 fixation occurs during the night, so that improves the water use efficiency. The effect of the main environmental factors, irradiance or temperature on photosynthesis, is presented in this slide. Net photosynthesis increases hyperbolically with irradiance for C3 and for C4 plants. C3 plants saturate earlier with lower irradiance than C4 plants. And the asymptote photosynthetic value, the maximum photosynthesis, is higher for C4 than for C3. Here we have a plot of maximum gross photosynthesis versus temperature. For C4 plants, we observe that the maximum is between 25 and 30 degrees and below around 8 degrees we have almost no photosynthesis. For C3 plants we have much higher photosynthesis for low temperatures and the optimum is around 20 degrees. So considering these two responses to irradiance and temperature it is clear that the C3 plants will behave better under conditions of low temperature and lower irradiance, while C4 plants will perform better under high temperatures and under high irradiance. If we integrate photosynthesis for all the leaves of the canopy, we can deduce the following equation where P and C is the net canopy photosynthesis. In this equation, we have that canopy photosynthesis is related to incident radiation, distinction coefficient, which we will explain later, the leaf area index, which is the ratio of leaf area over ground area, RD, which is the dark respiration per unit leaf area. Epsilon, which is here or here, is the initial slope of leaf photosynthesis versus radiation. And PGX is the maximum leaf photos gross photosynthesis. The extinction coefficient is related to radiation interception by the crop. And radiation interception is the difference of radiation between the values above the canopy and the values at the soil surface. So the difference between I sub zero and I is intercepted radiation. That depends as the value of radiation reaching the soil is equal to that on top of the canopy times an exponential function minus K by L minus extinction coefficient times the leaf area index, we can deduce that radiation interception is equal to I sub zero multiplied by one minus this exponential function. The extinction coefficient is a parameter that describes the, the, uh, the difficulty in intercepting radiation by the canopy. It might range between values around 0.4 for vertical leaves and close to 1 for horizontal leaves. Typical values for cereals might be around 0.7. So the radiation interception is related in principle to the distribution of leaf angles. Using the equations that we have seen before for canopy photosynthesis, we can calculate the canopy photosynthesis of crops with different extinction coefficients as a function of leaf area index. If we compare a crop with a K of 0 0.5 with a tendency to vertical leaves, we see that the maximum values of photosynthesis will occur around 5 to 6 of leaf area index. If the leaves are horizontal, like here, 
K09, the maximum photosynthesis of the canopy occurs between 3 and 4 of leaf area index. So it is, there is clearly a quite uh, a big difference between different leaf angles in terms of canopy photosynthesis for different leaf area indexes. We can also compare crops with different values of leaf area index as a function of irradiance. If the leaf area index is a small, we will have a response like this. And if the leaf area index is 4, we will have this type of curve. As the leaf area index increases, then the relationship between canopy photosynthesis and irradiance tends to get more straight. Now we might wonder if plants with a higher photosynthetic capacity at the leaf level will have also a higher canopy photosynthesis. And we see in this graph that that is not always the case. We see here canopies with leaf area index of only one, where we see that the greater the leaf photosynthesis, the greater the net crop photosynthesis. For leaf area index two, we, have, we see also a proportionality, but for high leaf area index with a value of four, now we see that the maximum crop photosyn photosynthesis occurs when the leaf photosynthesis is not too high. So the canopy photosynthesis does not only depend on the maximum leaf gross photosynthesis. Taking into account the idea that photosynthesis is partly regulated to the absorption of radiation, and the absorption of radiation is related to interception of radiation, Professor Montes did a study where he calculated for different crops in Britain, which were apples, barley, potatoes, and sugar beets. He calculated the amount of dry matter produced and the total intercepted solar radiation. His results are shown in this graph. We see that the four crops have or show linear relationships between total dry matter production and intercepted solar radiation. The different lines have similar slopes which is very striking as the four crops look quite different. We have apples, a tree, barley, a cereal, potatoes, which is used with, for the tubers or sugar beets, which, are, which roots are harvested. But they have in common that they are all C3 crops. So in summary, Professor Montes showed that there is a general similar relationship between total dry matter accumulation and radiation interception for C3 crops. The relationship between biomass production and radiation interception can also be uh, manifested in this graph where we show our own data of canopy photosynthesis of a cotton crop in the summer of 2003 as a function of intercepted PAR. And we see that there is a linear relationship, although it differs during the morning and during the afternoon. The greater values during the morning than during the afternoon are associated with uh, lower temperatures and therefore lower respiration of the canopy. But in general, we also observe that's a linear relationship between photosynthesis of the canopy and radiation interception. The slope of the biomass versus intercepted radiation is the so-called radiation use efficiency. 
In other words, the radiation use efficiency is the amount of biomass produced per unit intercepted PAR. Therefore, we can calculate biomass B as the product of radiation use efficiency by the total intercepted PAR. Look at this. We calculate intercepted PAR as the sum from emergence to harvest of, for each day, the fraction of intercepted radiation, Fi, multiplied by the amount of PAR of incoming PAR, RSP. We can calculate for different crops the fraction of intercepted radiation using the crop coefficient curves of the method of FAO. During the initial stage A, when the crop is rather small, we can take a value around 10% of radiation interception as a constant. Then, for the maximum crop coefficient stage, we can calculate F as equal to Kc minus 0, 003. And the same would hold for the final. And then we would interpolate for stages B and D. As we already know how to calculate the biomass production as a function of the radiation intercepted, which would be all this, we can calculate dry matter yield by multiplying the harvest index by biomass. The harvest index is the fraction of biomass that is harvested. Finally, if we want to calculate the fresh or commercial deal, we multiply all this, which is the dry matter yield, by 1 over 1 minus W, which is the fraction of water over fresh mass. Despite the analysis of Professor Montes, later work have shown that there are variations in radiation use efficiency. These variations might be related to the different photosynthetic capacity of leaves. For instance, olive trees have a rather low can, uh, leaf photosynthesis and its radiation use efficiency is small as compared to annual crops. In general, the fraction of diffuse, a high fraction of diffused radiation, for instance, inside a greenhouse, will cause a high radiation use efficiency. Other processes requiring energy, like nitrogen fixation, in the case of legumes, will lower, well, will reduce the radiation use efficiency. But more importantly, the composition of dry matter, the energy cost of producing each new gram of biomass will determine uh, important variations in radiation use efficiency. For instance, if we are accumulating oil, which requires a lot of energy for synthesizing, we will have a, a low radiation use efficiency. We can calculate, in any case, the radiation use efficiency according to the composition of the harvest. And we will use this equation that relates the radiation use efficiency to the fraction of carbohydrates, proteins, and fat, and to the harvest index of the crop. Here in this equation, RUEC would be the radiation use efficiency when only carbohydrates are accumulated. To apply that equation, we need data on crop composition, and for that we can use the appendix of chapter 32 in the book by Villalobos and Ferreres. And here we have several crops, from maize, several uh, cereals, maize, rice, wheat, and several legumes, bean, faba bean, soybean, and also some industrial crops like cotton, sugarcane, or sunflower. 
for each one we know according to the table the percent dry matter this might be used to calculate fresh yield and also we have the fractions of protein of fat and ash ash is equivalent to the fraction of minerals in the dry biomass and the fraction of carbohydrates will, will be 1 minus these three fractions you see here that there are important differences in both dry matter percent look here sugar cane has only 26 percent of dry matter and we also see important differences in proteins typically legumes will have high percent of proteins and some we will also have high percentage of fat on the other hand cereals will show low fractions of protein and very low fractions of fat oil seed crops like sunflower will have a lot of fat a lot of oil but also a rather high percent of protein here we see also values of dry matter percent and dry matter composition for some horticultural crops and some subterranean crops like potato or sugar beets we see also important differences in dry matter composition look at this tomato only has five percent of dry matter as compared to values as high as 77 percent for date palm in this case the fractions of protein are rather uh, low but olive trees or oil palm have a high percent of fat they are crops that are harvested basically for its their oil as we said the harvest index is the fraction of yield over total biomass and we have typical values of harvest index around 0.5 under good conditions for further crops where we can use almost all the biomass harvest index might be as high as 0.9 for legumes and oil seed crops we would be from 0.3 to 0.4 and for subterranean crops like potato or sugar beets the values might be higher from 0.7 to 0.8 in the book in chapter 13 you can find this table that shows the harvest index of different crop species the typical intervals are shown for commercial crops that are not under severe stress if the stress from flowering onwards is very severe the harvest index might go to zero because no yield is produced and that is typical of uh, crops producing seeds here we have a lot of variation in the harvest index look alfalfa which is a fodder crop can be very has a high harvest index fruit crops or subterranean crops like onion or sugar beet has a rather high have a rather high harvest index cereals like wheat or barley here are typically around 50% of harvest index the harvest index might be also associated to other limiting factors for instance in this table we see values of harvest index expressed as the fraction of the maximum value of 0 0.47 of wheat three locations in australia we have a location in indera which has the best water supply and in this case for two 
nitrogen supplies with zero, we have a lower harvest index than for 200 kilos of nitrogen. In this case, the lack of nitrogen is reducing the harvest index. If we go to the worst situation in terms of water supply, we see that the opposite occurs because if we don't apply nitrogen, we have a higher harvest index than when we apply nitrogen. That would be explained because applying nitrogen would increase crop growth, so the plants would run out of water before the grain filling period. So that would imply that applying nitrogen would reduce, importantly, the harvest index. In intermediate situations, the application or not of nitrogen would not have an important effect on the harvest index. According to the equations to calculate yield that we have seen before, we see that the variations in yield might be related to the radiation use efficiency <coughs> or to the harvest index. For instance, potato has a low protein content and low fat content. Therefore, the, we can expect a high radiation use efficiency. And also, it shows a very high harvest index. And combining high harvest index with high radiation use efficiency, we will have typically high yields. On the other hand, soybean that includes nitrogen fixa fixation and high protein and high fat will induce a low radiation use efficiency. Apart from that, the harvest index will be lower than for potato, and therefore the yields of soybean will be typically lower than for potato. It is, it is interesting to see that plant breeding has indirectly increased the radiation use efficiency for some species, like wheat, cultivars in the UK and Australia. Here we see a plot of the radiation use efficiency as a function of the year of release of the variety in Australia, this straight line, or in the United Kingdom. The higher values in the United Kingdom are due to a better water supply under those conditions. But for both locations, there has been a steady increase in the in radiation use efficiency what, that it has been probably associated to an improvement in the grain number. The uh, relationship between yield and environmental conditions, in special to temperature, might be analyzed using this equation, this general equation of productivity. Yield is the product of harvest index times radiation use efficiency times radiation interception. But the radiation interception is the sum of something from emergence to harvest, of radiation interception of each day from emergence to harvest. And this duration depends on temperature. Therefore, under conditions of low temperature, we will increase the length of this period and therefore we will increase the total radiation interception and likely we will increase the yield of the crop. Here we show an example of the calculation of potential yield of an oilseed crop, castor bean, Ricinus communis, in Cordoba, Spain. The crop is sown on April the 1st and harvested on September the 30th. The harvest index is 0.25. The seed water content is 5%. The castor seed contains 50% fat and 15% protein on a dry matter basis. We assume that temperature does not affect crop productivity. The seasonal intercepted PAR is 1,106 megajoules per square meter. 
First of all, we calculate radiation use efficiency using the equation that we saw as a function of the fraction of carbohydrates, protein, and fat, and as a function of the harvest index. Applying this equation, we would deduce that radiation use efficiency would be 1.66 grams per megajoule of intercepted PAR. Now we can calculate fresh yield using this equation, where W is the fraction of dry matter in the seeds, harvest index is 0 0.25, here is radiation use efficiency, and this is the total intercepted PAR. And therefore, we come up with a total yield of 4,830 kilograms per hectare. The calculated radiation interception is shown in this table where for each month we write the solar radiation, we multiply that solar radiation by 4, uh, 0.45 to deduce PAR, we have here the number of days per month, and we have here the fraction of intercepted PAR for each month. So multiplying PAR, the number of days, by the fraction of interception, we come up to the intercepted PAR per month, like here. We sum up the six months of the growing uh, season and come up with the total intercepted PAR of the crop.